Okay, okay, I'll get you up on this table. Okay. You're alright, see? <laughs> You're alright. We got your radio thing working and we even put out that fire before it burned this place to the ground. Okay, now you can wake up. We're at your stupid radio thing. Wake up and say something. Okay, okay, we can do this. We can fix this. Um, just need some help. Um, you aren't dead, right? Like, not dead dead, just a little bit dead. Right? Maybe? No? I don't know. What the hell am I even doing? I don't even know what's wrong with you. You could just be knocked out. Or... Or... Um... Why the hell did you have to be so feckless? You couldn't take Brett or any of the others, and yet here we are picking glass out of your stupid face! What do I do? What do I do? I don't want you to die. But by all the hells, it will teach you a lesson! <sighs> Fine. 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 Appellant ut rimitibi et conciliario. Appellant ut remitibi. Hail to my queen. How may I assist you? I need to know if he's dying, if not already doomed. You seldom just call upon me. Immediate resolution. We are friends, are we not? Who is this boy to you? And why give up something so great for such base knowledge? Gabriel, he has been... He's been well, he's decent. Dumb, but... A decent person, you know? Right, you're not human, and hardly anywhere close to dumb, so how would you know? Stating the obvious now, are we? He took me in, okay? He didn't have to, but he offered me shelter, food, and by the old and the new, he had a shower. A warm shower. You remember the last time I showered? Don't answer that, actually. Uh, I know you do. That's a number I don't need to hear. It was a pleasant and much-needed surprise. So, human pleasantries and niceties is all that it takes. You don't oft tolerate most people with less gestures. Albeit put yourself at risk for such gifts as these. It's different, okay? He's... Blah. Gag, I almost said he's different. Mm. Are you going to help me or not? For all I know, we're wasting time! What is it that he wants from you? What? I, I don't understand. He's unconscious right now. He doesn't want anything from me right now. Through all my travels, all that I have seen across times, through reality back and forth, to across and beyond, there is a constant. A constant you so believed. Man wants for everything that will move him forward. For something he will gain. That's not what I wanted when you and I first met. I disagree. But our clandestine meeting is not what I'm discussing, my queen. He wants something from you. He is alone. He aches and wears that pain on his sleeve. 
He desires companionship. Gabriel, no. Gabriel, he doesn't want that. He's... Uh, bloody hell. How do I explain sexual preferences and identity to you? He doesn't feel any desire. Respectfully, my queen. Love comes in many forms. If you believe that with all my knowledge and experience, I don't understand the differences of that, then you are quite naive. And if I may be so bold, even as you believe you know so much, no, my raven. He does not need sex, physical courtship, or possibly even romantic love. Maybe, just maybe, he does love in a sense of the word and needs that love returned. And this is why he keeps you around. To feel wanted. To feel like he has a value as based by others. Maybe not desired. Especially not in a profound and powerful way that defines humanity as you have known it or explicitly shown to you. But he may want from you the comfort of an ally. As little as you know, my queen, he knows far less. He knows little of his own world, and what he knows of his it is but slivers and fantasies of your world. Blinded by hope and perseverance, preventing him from seeing the sheer veil before him dividing worlds. He is hopelessly stuck, believing he can change tomorrow, make it his own. But... I see his willingness to learn. Do you intend to teach him of your world? No. This surprises me. Please elaborate. I didn't want to know of this world. The world you and I share. I didn't want to know of my place in it. How... Insignificant, I, we all are. I was forced to learn of these things. He is better living in shadows, believing he knows so much. And what of equivalence? He opened his world to you. Would that not be fair to him? Another trait of humanity. What is it? An eye for an eye? That's only for returning punishment and pain, Dee. If I were to take an eye, justice is served by that person taking my eye. What you are thinking is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Mm. Am I wrong? Not at all, my queen. It is far more apt. I was thinking how truly selfish this moral code is, doing things only for the hope that someone will return in kindness to you. You give to receive. Isn't that what you were saying about equivalent exchange for my information? Giving information is never an act of equivalence. It takes far more from one side than the other. Think of the teacher as to a student. Think of you and I. I did not teach you great and powerful things without giving you an understanding. Even before that, I had to give you the foundation for that information to hold steady in your mind. And before that, I had to learn how you learn. All of this just so you can learn my proper 
name. But we are moving beyond my point. He shared his world with you. Why not share yours? But how did he share his world with me? I have been a part of his world already. I've lived in this world all of my life. What? Why are you grinning? At least I think that's grinning under your mask. You... you aren't making any sense. I am of this world. So you knew of his secret home? What was it that he gave you? Uh, a shower. That's right. So by being of his world, you already knew of all of this. No, but I... But... You're saying he shared his world of this space, of this radio show he puts on. His world is what he makes of it. That right now, keeping this secret has been his world, and he opened it up to me. Even after he had been betrayed in the past. Much like your books, and myself, are your world. How you know more than you are letting on. All of this world, as dismal as it is currently, is all he has, and he shared it with you. This place is ghastly to look upon. Bit of a firefight recently, in more ways than one. All of this world, and he trusted you. More than anyone else before you, he had hoped you would be indebted to him, not just for food and shelter, but for his vulnerability. He did all this hoping to gain something from you. He had hoped for a companion, the Golden Rule. Even as a poor moral code, it is what he hoped. I get that, but what's your point, Dee? My queen, why are you willing to give something so great for him when he is so purposefully, in his mind, put you in his debt? He wants something, and he has put you in a position where you may feel obligated to give it in return. But he didn't know this would happen. That I have any power that he knows of. He's seen some power, but not all of my power. He didn't know that I could fix something like this. How would he know if I could help him at this moment? He couldn't. He wouldn't know that he would be unconscious and I could help him. Isn't that the foresight of man? Gathering favors like a goblin? Procuring them as if shiny baubles until he needs them. Why else claim an umbrella on a dry day? For the days it rains, my queen. Uh, that doesn't matter right now! He is hurt, and I need to know how to help him! I need... I need... Is something the matter, my queen? <laughs> You are clever, Dee. I fail to understand your path of thinking. You had me talk myself in circles, walking, metaphorically, away from my heated emotions and to think critically, challenging me, removing my feelings from the situation, even if it was to view him as someone using me, like my father, just so I could ask the right question. Much like the circles you speak of, my raven. Your path of logic seems to be going nowhere but back to your beginning. Don't be smart with me, Dee. I asked you when you arrived if he was alive or doomed. You asked me questions of my situation, replacing my feelings for logic, and leading me to a different thought process and new feelings. Now I realize I asked the wrong question, and I would have sacrificed a year for nothing but reassurance. <laughs> you are smart, Dee. You know me so well. An understatement, my queen. 
So, what is the right question? You have outsmarted me, Raven. <sighs> okay. So, um. Okay. Give me the knowledge that will stay with me and I can call upon at any time to save those whose life is in peril and with a wave of my hand solve their ailments based on each case. As so you have requested, so I shall grant Raven Queen of the Eight Seals, Lord of the Grand Book of Black, student of the last arts beyond the reach of men, I ask you, what is your sacrifice? The usual, one year off my back. And so your sacrifice has been found satisfactory for all those beyond. Now bow your head to receive thy gift. Granted unto you is my gift for your life to use. <sighs> now let's take a look at you, Gabriel. You idiot. Okay. He has excess fluid in the brain, trauma from the fall. As you say, my queen. We can relocate the fluid through his body to be reabsorbed, and that should help. Such fragile creatures. Why not transcend? Join us and move beyond such worries. Because humans are looking for something, and they believe a limited lifespan adds worth to their hunt. Besides, very few people know how to. But right now, stop distracting me. How long will he remain unconscious? Maybe a few hours. Head trauma is hard to map. Even with magic, it's not a perfect science. <sighs> Thank you, D. I truly have no words that can express how helpful and generous you have been to me. I am very grateful. Your trick of sacrificing a year will wear down quickly. One sip gave you so much. You only have so many years before it affects your natural life. If you find that- If I still had it, do you think we would be in this mess at the first place? My apologies, my queen. If there is nothing else you need of me, do I have leave? You may return until I call upon you, my sev my friend. My queen. Titles, as such, may have consequences. Look at the consequences now. I believe that what you speak is nigh but a small obstacle, and one worth its inconvenience. I am honored, my raven. A word of warning. I inflated the boy's desires. He does care a great deal for you. However, you do not owe him anything. As I have said for so long, only trust the footsteps you have taken. But if you wish to walk along his path, ask him why you are here. I believe you will learn more about him than he even realizes is true. Maybe you're right. But maybe that was the old him wanting to play hero. As you say, farewell. <sighs> okay, Gabriel. You can wake up any time now. I guess I can look at the radio to see if there's something I can fix. I'll devour you! What? Oh. Oh. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> Easy there, Gabriel. Don't puke on the mics. I worked so hard to keep them working. Where? You're still at the station. You fell and hit your head pretty badly. That explains why the room is spinning. It's never done that before. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Just get some rest. And when it's safe to move you, we'll take you back to your flat. I like this idea. idea. Mm. Yeah. You... You must be some sort of magic if you keep saving me like this. <laughs> You're clearly still out of it. Get some rest. When you're back on your feet, we can do that stupid question game you love so much. Yay! <laughs> just, just one question. Hmm? Did we win? You saved the day, Gabriel. <laughs>